Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with Polonia Vorsheba. It's the day after the night before, after the fiasco that was the Rangers tie. Um, it's just one of those things. You learn, you move on, and I really do think that this year we've been hampered massively uh, by our complete lack of creativity and quality on that right-hand side. Uh, when you actually look at last season... Victor Hugo grabbed a shitload of goals, and I think the reason he did so was because the service to him was so good from Rodriguez and, of course, from Yamrog as well. And that really did contribute. And that also improved the sort of uh, the service to Carbayo and, of course, Zvigawa um, by extension. Not only that, but we were given goals from that right-hand side too, so Victor Hugo was able to create for other people. And Valerie, well, he scored his first goal for the club in that game against um, Zag. So you can sort of see how off the pace we've been this year. So what I've done over this period is I've actually been playing Campagnaro on the right-hand side instead of Valerie. And we have been definitely better, as you'll see. Um, but also, more importantly, there's been a youth intake. You've seen the title. I am very, very happy nearly perfectly happy but we'll see i'll just show you the youth intake you should be seeing it on your screen now this guy is something else um if, let me just quote from my assistant manager or my head of youth department he was considered one of the best of his generation um i don't know if that's like golden generation i think golden generation is where you get a lot of good players i think this is where you've got like one really standout and boy is he a standout considering he's like two and a half stars i think it was um brilliant but now i'm going to show you him because this is where it really does get good and this is him this is blaze lisic um Wow. I, I'm in, in utterly in awe. Let's just go through this. Like, dribbling, 13. Crossing, 15. For a 16-year-old, he's got 11 finishing, which is great. Perfect for that role. 13 first touch. The one downside, firstly, straight off the bat, is that he's a left-sided midfielder rather than an advanced player. So we're already training him to play further up. He had nothing here before, but we're training him there. The other downside is, God, I wish this guy was on the right-hand side. Uh, it's like, we're all right in this. We've got Victor Hugo. We've got... Uh, Pauls, this is we if this guy was on the right hand side and had these stats i would be amazed but okay whatever moving on he's fast 16 acceleration 15 pace he's six foot two he does argue with officials which isn't great but he's got consistency as well um i am so so happy with this guy i think he has the potential in terms of overall impact to be better for us than mateus Zvigal, and i never thought i would say that in this save so this is blaze lisic what a player um he already is not a single red stat in fact i think his lowest stat is, his lowest attribute is just long throws i mean of this the actual things that matter to a role on that side let's just see winger on attack which is what he would be the lowest one he's got is passing of nine, and he's still only 16, remember? Uh, his vision of eight, I quite like that to be quite high as well, but he's got reasonable good composure. It's the fact that he's tall and fast and already has excellent technical abilities. I'm very, very happy. Very, very happy. To the point that I've thrown him straight into the first team squad to give him some games. Now, we played a load of games off camera, a massive amount, which we're going to go through today before the final match of our um, first of the championship. I was thinking about trying to do the whole lot, but it was going to be close to sort of 20 matches off camera. I just didn't have time. It's not really much of a case of, oh, well, you know, just do twice as much one episode. Yeah. But what you forget is that we still have to do another episode. Otherwise, yeah, <laughs> if that makes sense. If I do twice as much for one video, it doesn't mean I've got two videos. It means I have one video and then I still have to make another one after that. So time is of the essence. But um, I just think this is this is brilliant. How do you get the opposition report, which you use before each game? I can't even find it or get it anywhere on the opposition page. Um, It might be down to not having the right data analysis facilities and having the right amount of data level and data analysis, I think, Um, if I'm thinking about the same page. Because if it's not appearing, that means you're not scouting it. Or you don't have that set up in your training to give you that report, I think. That might literally be the other thing I can think of. All the Americans at Schalke, Bello, Sergeant, Win uh, Weston McKenney. Cool to see that many Americans in one team in the Champions League. Yeah, and I know some of them, of course, were there already, but they have clearly actively gone out and signed more. I think they actually have an American regen there too. Um, it's really cool the way Schalke have just gone, yeah, we want the Americans. Time for the old hairdryer treatment. Anyway, they're kicking a boot across the dressing room and hitting Victor Hugo in the head. To be fair, um, I blame Kevin. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, Kevin is the one at fault for the Schalke one uh, initially. Everybody was at fault for the Rangers thing. Um, the defenders particularly were bad, but... It's war under the bridge now. We've just got to push on, you know? I have made another signing. He's not joined us yet. He'll be joining us in the summer, and I'll be explaining why. But I think he is... Um, I might have mentioned him in a previous episode as being, like, the guy for that right-wing slot, potentially. So we'll talk about him after the game's off camera. But I wanted to show you Lisic first, because he's had some involvement in those games, as you might have noticed. 
So directly after the Rangers game, we had a really poor performance at, uh, away at Swansk. They took the lead through a mercy, and I thought that was probably going to be it, to be honest. But we did actually get a goal. Um, the ball was whipped across, and there was Mateusz Figaro to score a header from a corner. I think that's the first one he's got this year, considering what's going on with that. So I'm wondering if maybe our corner tactics need working on a little bit, um, because it just, just was not looking good. But we did bail ourselves out to remain unbeaten, which is the most important factor. And then actually picked things up away at Katowice in the cup. A goal from Militic, one from Carbayo, and one from Valery. Yes, that's right, he scored a goal. We've actually looked pretty good in the cup this year, which is quite weird, and I don't know why. My guess, actually, is because the rules in the cup mean you can only have two foreign players in your squad. And a lot of the other sides in this league, I think, are having to really scrape the barrel for players, whereas we've actually got some nice options with our homegrown talent to put in the team. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's definitely helped. But then that form carried over into the league against second place Viswa, a really, really top performance. Goal from Pandurovic and then two from Campagnaro, proving my point really about how Valerie just really doesn't seem to do a job, uh, allowing Pauls to get an assist in this one. But two goals for Campagnaro. He's vastly outscored Valerie this year, despite playing way less matches. And that to me really does show that even a half decent player on that right hand side could do bits for us. And Campagnaro is not that player. He's at best mediocre. Uh, and that really is pushing it. Whereas Valerie is just. He's been dismal this year. I really think that that was a poor signing. But at the time, it felt like a good signing. But hey, but then it finally happened. Our first defeat in, would you believe it, 49 matches. What a massive surprise. Just as you're about to hit 50, bam, there comes the result. We lose 2-1. Um, the, the most frustrating thing about it is it was two long shots. And I thought Franceschi... Uh, you know, sometimes when it's just, that's just how it is. We even equalised too. Victor Hugo scored a wonderful, um, I think it was a free kick actually, to equalise for us. And I thought, oh my God, at least we'll survive. But no, Brian Martin's got, Brian Martin? Uh, <laughs> I didn't recognise him. Is he a real player? He is a real player. And he's Spanish. Brian Martin, maybe. Um, yeah, another long ranger. And Corona become the first team to beat us uh, in 49 league matches. Really annoyed me. But, ah well. We then took all of our anger out. On this one, in the next match, a goal for Alberto Freitas. Another one for Mateusz Svigal, which was nice. Uras Pandurovic got one. And then another one for Campagnaro. Again, had a really good match, an 8.7. It was more of the defender's day for this one. Two more assists for Alberacine. He's been really good. But a 4-0 thumping of this one. It's like, where was this in the last match? Just at least be done awful. And then it was the first match in which uh, Lisek actually played. I threw him straight into the first team for an away match against second place at the time, uh, Lechia. They've really been coming for us. And what a performance from the lad. He won man of the match as a 16-year-old on his day in the top flight. That just said it all for me. Uh, we took the lead through to Herbo Garcia, who again has been banging them in this month. I don't really know how, but he has. And then we won a penalty. He won the penalty, so I decided to let him take it, and he dispatched it in the 64th minute for his first ever senior goal, which was glorious. They then got on back straight away. However, um, in the 80th minute, he was played through, hit one off the crossbar, it bounced back to him, and he put it in the back of the net for his second of the night. Brilliant stuff from him, and then immediately they got another one. But we did get away with it, and Lisic scored twice on his debut. What a lad. And he's a dribbling machine. And then in the next match, we carried on from where we left off. A 2-0 victory over Gursic, uh, Gurnik, rather. And as you can see, Lisic scored the opener for us in the 37th minute. Three goals in two matches all of a sudden. I was like, okay, this guy's going to stay in the team for a little while. We then added another one through Jacobo Garcia, who's on to like six or seven this year in the league, which is crazy good for the def the uh, the deep line playmaker in this team. But again, back-to-back -back man of the matches for Lisic. He's made two appearances and he's got two man of the match awards. Wow. Unfortunately, we then went and lost away at Rakov. And, um... Well, I mean, you can see the stats for yourself. We just couldn't take our chances in this game. We didn't create a lot of good chances overall, but we still had opportunities, is what I would say. And it definitely shouldn't have been a 1-0 defeat, but we lost to Rakov last time. I think that actually our previous last defeat was against Rakov as well, where they beat us at home uh, last season. So that kind of sucks, and that's two defeats now. But we then responded with a nice home victory over Legia Vorshava. And you'll notice Escobar got the goal, Jacobo Garcia got another goal, but Lisic was man of the match. I mean... He got an assist, and he got five key passes as well. He has a key pass machine. He's just generating key passes like crazy, and he's dribbling so much. In one of the matches, I think he completed 11 dribbles in one game. Um, he is really, really looking great, and he's only 16. I'm, I'm such a fan of the guy already. And then a final off-camera game, a 5-0 thumping of Rakov in the cup. My guess is, again, because of the rules they had to change around players. Milicic got a goal. Pandurovic got a goal. Kevin got a goal. Campagnaro got a goal. Pauls got a goal. Two assists for Escobar on the night. I actually saw him grab man of the match, but everybody was brilliant. At least it didn't start this one. Uh, I rested him for today's game so you guys could see him against Krakowia. So we are through to the cup final, though. I don't know who we're going to play, but we could potentially do the double this year, which is at least something. Uh, we've not done that before in this save. It just sucks that we're in this position, really. So this is how the league looks. We are nine 
19 points clear now of Lechia. Uh, Rakov, not Rakov, this one went on a period where they lost five in a row, I think, and then drew one. So it completely ruined their chances as Lechia caught them up. Uh, Corona catching them up too. Swanska in there. Lech Poznan in sixth. Uh, Lechia down in ninth with Rakov. They are genuinely going to struggle. In fact, it's, it's either going to be Legia or Rakov, really. I think one of them is going to miss out on the championship group this year, which is dreadful. Katowice have started to pick it up a little bit now, uh, probably because they've spent all that money, but it's still pretty embarrassing for them. So... This is Ernesto Peralta. He is the guy that I have decided is going to make things better on that right-hand side. I'm still going to potentially look for other players, but he has he has agreed to join us. Now, I looked at this guy in January when he was brought through. I sent my scouts out on a short-term focus and ignored the bit about uh, whether they'd actually signed for us and just looked for like the best players they could find for the role. And he came back. And I thought, you know what? There's a chance. We'd sent out scouts to watch him. I went to watch a game, I think, um, you declared as a top target, and he softened to the idea of signing for us. But when I put the bid in, they wanted 28 million. Now, I knew for a fact that I could probably get that down to about 18, 19 million uh, in total but I thought ah we'll just probably leave it because th there's no way we, we didn't have the money for a start so I just thought we'll leave it to the summer and see what happens but then I thought well maybe we could structure a deal so I came back again and I know he's inconsistent I am aware of that and the fact that he's got a broken leg too there is this is where the issues start to come I went back in for him and they wanted way less money this time and I wasn't sure why because he wasn't he didn't have a broken leg yet um I should point that out so I went in for him and eventually managed to arrange a deal with them, which in grand total cost 10.75 million, which is a lot less, which is still be our record signing. But when you look at this, he's got crossing, he's got dribbling, he's got finishing, first touch, passing, he's got vision, he's fast, he's tall, he has all the attributes I want, he's got good composure. To me, this is what we've needed on the right-hand side this year and we just didn't have. The consistency thing is a slight problem, but it's not red. If it was red, I might have been a bit more concerned, but I felt like this was the deal for us. So we got it all over the line, everything was good to go, and then he broke his leg and I'm and this was before the deal was completed and I was like shit because then he didn't pass his medical and the board vetoed the deal so I was like damn what do we do so I went back in again and this time I scheduled the transfer for the end of the season because he could have joined during the transfer window so I rescheduled it for the end of the season I know he's got the broken leg but he'll be back for the start of next season in theory and we'll have better facilities so it should be able to help him along with his recovery should be back in time for the start of the Champions League at least um and yeah, the deal has now been done and the board have accepted the deal. So he will be joining us at the start of next season for 10.75 million in total. Resolute personality as well. He's only going to be on 17 grand a week. He is going to have a couple of clauses in there, but I was surprised that he would accept not a huge wage rise. But I think this guy's decent. He's going to join us. I'm really, really looking forward to getting him in. I think he's been... He'll be the missing link for us. I genuinely think that that's what's missing this year. I'm still disappointed. I'm still pissed that we've lost that those those two matches. Um, but I'm going to put back into the team. Oh, he's not even listed here, is he? <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to put him back in the team. He's not quite grasped that position yet. Um, it will take a little while. Look how long it's taken Zvigawa to get used to his role. He's basically still not there. Okay, so the bench: Escobar, Malik, Pauls, Valerie, Bonavento, Rosas, and Papshin. Because uh, no, we're not going to have him. We'll put Fiatio on the bench. We don't need that guy on there too. But Capagnaro has at least done an all right job over this period. He's got a couple of goals, a few assists. He just looks generally better than Valerie. Oh, Alvaro seen. Ball in. Cleared away. Garcia's through again. Oh, great save. Lisak. Oh, cleared away. Capagnaro. Is there another shot on the end of it? Kevin. Go oh. <laughs> what a dreadful effort. Lisak's got good delivery too, so we might be able to find Svigawa. And it's over the crossbar. Good chance. Wow, we really are dominating this match, which is really nice to see. Yamrog, 69% possession still. Ball across. Lisek is in there again. He's scored. It's Krakovia nil. Polonia Vorshevar one. He's got four goals this season already. Um, from the left-hand side. Yamrog with a nice little throw in. But it comes back to him, and he's just peeled away to the far post. Nobody's tracked the run. Wonderful ball in. And a beautiful finish from Lisek. And he's now scored himself his fourth goal of the season already. Brilliant, lad. Well, we can actually see there that Legia would go into sixth. And Rakov would, despite coming second last season, not even get into the championship group this year. Uh, which would be an abysmal showing for them. Lisek's through again. Oh, nearly. Could pick someone out here. Vigawa. Lisek. Back post. Capagnaro. And it's in the back of the net. We're 2-0 up. Anthony Capagnaro now with the goal. And Blazy Lisek now gets the assist. I mean, I know I said this about Zvigawa before, but I really do think this guy could actually be more important in the grand scheme of things. Uh, he's come flying into the team. I think he's on for another Man of the Match award tonight if he carries on like this. It's 2-0 now away at Krakovia. We're on to 76 points. We can definitely beat that record. He's still around. Escobar. Zvigawa's in. Oh, drills it just wide. He's really not been at it this year. Rakoski. Oh, God. Oh, what a save from Franceschi. Ooh. Oh, we are pushed right up on them here. Oh, my God. That's dangerous as hell. Lisek's through again. Can he slip it in for someone? He might. Zvigawa bends it wide of the post. Ooh. 
there we go. Krakowia nil, Polonia Warszawa two. And wait, I think something did change in the lead. Legia don't qualify. Oh, you are kidding me. Legia have actually lost at home to this one in the end and have not qualified for the championship group. Rakov do get in there. Uh, Lech Poznan get in there as well, which is good. But Legia, come on, lads. You're better than this. I know they're our big rival, but we kind of need them to do well. Uh, Lisek is somehow man of the match for the fourth time in five league starts, and he scored in four of them too. It just it just reminds me so much of Zvigawa when he started for us last season or the season before. So there we have it. The championship group, we do, in theory, hopefully have fixtures for it. Um... Yeah, wait, I better check that, actually. Please have fixtures. <sighs> Did shat myself for a second there? Yeah, so we are top, of course. 19 points clear of Lechia. This were, I think they'll definitely get into Europe this season. I think it's very unlikely that they're going to slip any further than that. Um, but it's the fact that Legia didn't manage to qualify for the championship group this year. I mean, that's just painful. Um, we've also got the cup final in there against Legia. So that's going to be interesting. Actually, you know, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll make it two, uh, not two episodes, two lap matches but what the first one will be the legia game as the cup final because you've got to see that and then the last one will be the final match of the season against viswa to finish things off you've got to see the cup final but i don't want to do a separate episode for it there's no point we'll just do it as one big episode so that's gonna be fun uh, if you've enjoyed this episode and i really hope you have we've actually got back into decent form lately three more matches in a row um without conceding a goal uh, and only one goal conceded in the last five games so that's definitely better and we're scoring more goals now thanks to Thanks to the new boy, to be honest. If you've enjoyed it, drop a like. That'd be spectacular. If you're looking forward to seeing how this guy's career progresses, then drop a like. That'd be fantastic. I just can't believe... Uh, then again, we got crap last year, so it kind of swings and roundabouts, I suppose. But he, for me, is the, the best one we've actually had so far. But let me know. Who's better, Zvigawa or Lisek? I I'm curious. And uh, I suppose it does kind of make sense, though, because we have increased our youth recruitment and junior coaching since then. So mm, that kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be awesome. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for the cup final and the final day of the season. So hopefully we can do a double. That'll be awesome. See you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.